So we're talking about acquisitions again. Now, for those of you that's been following the channel, you know I've made a lot of these videos. And I will admit that most of them is mainly Xbox, but we're making another PlayStation acquisition video. Now look, I have made a video on this topic in the past, but with recent stuff in the industry going on, I feel like it is valid to make another video on this topic and what that topic is. PlayStation buying Square Enix. So yeah, we're going to be talking about that. And you guys know, if you guys enjoyed the video, definitely hit that like button. If you want more content like this, subscribe to the channel. I do weekly content. And don't forget to go over there at Twitter and follow me at Lord Addict ILP. Without any further ado, let's talk about PlayStation potentially buying Square Enix. What's going on you guys? Gaming out here coming at you for another video. You guys know how it is, man. We, we talk about acquisitions a lot on this channel because I do feel like because Microsoft has been very vocal about buying stuff such as Bethesda, Activision, they bought a handful of studios back in 2018. Microsoft has unintentionally started this giant thing when it comes to is a publisher going to buy these these other publishers or are they going to merge them and i think that a lot of people assume that when it comes to sony now it's not necessarily that they can't afford stuff it's just they don't have the masses amount of money that a company like microsoft or google would have or even facebook to that matter they are in the vr space so it was really curious to see you know what is on the table for playstation now they have been actively purchasing stuff they bought insomniac games the people who make spider-man they bought blue point the people who usually remake all of their games and they bought you know the people who make returnal they have been out there spending money making sure that these studios don't end up in the hands of their competition such as microsoft you know tencent's out there too as well buying companies up like left and right so sony has to be aggressive even know that they wouldn't normally do this in the past because it's not the past anymore we're in a different type of gaming industry where if you play it safe too long that studio that's been making your bangers or you know games that are really good and doing really well on your platform are going to get bought by another company so let's go a little bit of backup when it comes to the square enix thing Square Enix has always had a Western publisher. They've always had an Eastern publi uh, publisher. Well, you know, more like teams, not publisher. But, you know, they've had the Western teams, the Eastern teams. Now, the Western teams was the people that made, like, Tomb Raider, DXX. You know, they made the Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers. They made those type of games. Then you have the Eastern developers making, like, Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest. And they, they're very open to publishing games, such as, like, Bravery Default. I think that's made by Square Enix. Well, published by square enix and then you got triangle strategy that they just made octopath traveler got a lot of these little games that they help fund over there in the eastern part of the world now for the longest time i've always felt like square enix isn't really on the table for sony to buy because one they have such a good relationship with them it doesn't really make sense for sony to go out and buy them now i know i literally just said that you have to be more aggressive in this kind of industry that we currently are in with the gaming industry Industry. but i think sony and square enix was different because there was such a good relationship there you didn't really see a lot of the key games of square enix going to their competition such as xbox now you did see certain games get exclusivity on the nintendo platform such as bravery default i really hope they made i'm pretty sure confident that they published bravery default but don't quote me but like i said triangle strategy octopath traveler and i think people really just assumed since those games aren't really going to the xbox platform too much that they wouldn't really care to purchase that studio but i think what happened is microsoft went away from buying single developers and they went to buying publishers such as activision like i mentioned earlier bethesda when microsoft made this change i think it woke up sony that it's like look like just because we have a relationship with these people money will change everyone's minds and sure right now square enix might not be available to purchase it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to happen in the future and anything could change depending on if people take over and leadership of, of square enix 
picks. Maybe they get into a point where a couple games flop. I know that they've had a couple bad performing games. You Let's have that happen to another five games. Then we'll see where Square Enix is going to be financially, where they'd be more open to being bought by a company such as Microsoft. And I think that that really opened their eyes, but they wasn't really going to commit to anything because they had the Final Fantasy. 7 remake and the final fantasy 7 remake 2 exclusive to their platform they have the final fantasy 16 and i think that this for the longest time was good enough for square enix and sony that they could have this established relationship without really opening up to anything now i want to point out that a couple of weeks ago or it was probably about a month ago you know there was a lot of big name playstation people such as greg miller and stuff uh, people that they were saying that there's about to be such a huge acquisition that was about to be announced that was going to be industry changing, but nothing happened. So I, I assume that people just assume that, you know, they got misinformation. I don't think that. Greg Miller is a very well-known person. He's in the, the gaming industry, hardcore. He has a lot of friends at PlayStation. I'm very confident that if he said that, he was willing to change his timing of his podcast. Now, a lot of people assumed because nothing happened, he just got bad information in terms of what was going to be announced and someone just lied to him. But I don't necessarily think that. I feel like what happened with Greg Miller is he may have gotten told the wrong timeline for when this announcement was going to happen. I'm very confident whatever he was told is going to be genuine and that's probably going to happen. And now remember guys, it was supposed to be a big acquisition so it would make sense that this would be pointing towards Square Enix. Exhibit number two, what example number two. We just had one of the biggest kind of like head scratching thing that Square Enix has done ever. They sold their Western divisions to another company called Embracer Group. I'm pretty sure that was the name of them. And a lot of people, including myself, they sold them for $300 million. And I feel like that, why would you do that? Now, I can understand if you want to get rid of Crystal Dynamics because maybe they they cost you a lot of money with the Avengers. So you would be more open to getting rid of a studio like that because they cost you all that money. But but why the people that make Guardian of the Galaxy? Like, to me, that makes no sense because you're going to want to capitalize on that game that people loved. Sure, it might not have hit exact quotes when it comes to sales, but you would think that that type of game, you could come out and it would be better and people would be looking at it more. I, for one, because of Avengers, didn't see too much into a game such as Guardian of the Galaxy. Uh, but then once the game actually came out and people was really enjoying it, I was more enticed to actually try that game out. And I feel like if they made a sequel and they did a good job on that sequel, you would see a lot more return in terms of the investment. But it's interesting that they sold that Western division. And they sold the IPs. They sold everything. It's like a clean slate that Square Enix is just getting rid of. Now, that's why I think a little bit is going on with this PlayStation thing. I know there's a lot of people making speculation out there and that's what this video is it's a speculation but there is things pointing in the direction that sony is going to be buying square enix what, what would you think would happen before you would buy a company like that maybe sony and square enix have had conversations in the past and maybe playstation just doesn't want that western division of square enix and that was always one of the things that was preventing them from buying square enix because sony already has such a huge pulse when it comes to the western market they don't really need any more in terms of those type of games but you know what they do need a lot of people have always criticized sony that it seems like they're kind of letting go of the japanese market their own market and they're not really investing into that market they're not trying to bring any kind of exclusivity to their platform but if they would buy something like square enix without the western division which i feel like playstation was not interested in then i feel like they would have a lot better chance of enticing the fans that have left their platform because of the lack of jr RPGs on the PlayStation brand and it's not that it's they're not coming most games do come to the PlayStation in terms of Japanese role-playing games but a lot of people want to see more exclusivity stuff a lot of people want to see you owning you know studios over there they want to see a lot of commitment in terms of how much you're investing in that market it's a lot easier to go out there and just 
pick a game that's going to do well and you think it does well because you've played it because clearly playstations executives they go out and they play these games before they make these exclusive deals it's easier just to snatch up one or two of those than it is to buy a studio or buy something such as square enix and continue nurturing it to make better games in the future and i think that if they bought square enix it would show their fans look we did kind of lost our way when it came to the Japanese market, but we're correcting that by buying Square Enix, which is arguably one of the biggest places you can play in terms of Japanese games. Now look, there's obviously more places out there you can play Japanese games, but especially turn-based type of Japanese style games, this is one of the highlights that you can go towards. Now look, do I think they're buying them? I think there's a good chance they they are. Now, it, it just because they separated from the Western division, I feel like Square Enix is just trying to make as much money as possible before they ultimately sell to the PlayStation brand and they have these Western divisions that they know Sony doesn't care about. So they're trying to cut off that fat because that's still money that PlayStation is going to have to give them. And that's still going to raise up the price, which would make it harder to sell to PlayStation. Now they are a public company. So it's going to be interesting to see how Sony handles that. Now, a lot of people act like Sony couldn't buy that company. So it could easily buy that company. It's like I said, just because they don't go out and buy all these companies, they bid in a lot of them. They bid in the people who own Warframe. They bid in the WB games acquisition. Now, clearly nothing happened with that, but they still made the bid. They still are enticed that they want to own more studios and they want to bring them into the PlayStation brand. And I feel Square Enix is really good on that. Now, in terms of competition, it's actually really good for PlayStation. Like we've mentioned earlier, they don't have to go out of their way to get the Final Fantasy 16s, but there's a lot of games that Square Enix publishes that go on Nintendo. Uh, the, right now, Octopath Traveler is pretty much only on Xbox and not PlayStation. When it, I mean, it is on the Switch and it's on Steam, but when it comes to Xbox and PlayStation, Octopath Traveler's over there and it's out on PlayStation. That's probably a bad look. We just got Triangle Strategy that just came out exclusively on the Nintendo Switch. Now, I have a feeling that if they buy this company, that's stopping whatever happens in the future. Obviously, there's current contracts going out there certain games are going to have to fulfill those obligations most likely maybe sony won't do that but i have a feeling that they're going to stop that if you go to square enix for any kind of publishing arm such as you know the bravery defaults the triangle strategies because i do feel like if they buy square enix it's going to be they're going to run on their own merits i don't think that playstation is really going to intervene too much but i don't think it's going to be the exact same thing as bungie because bungie was a specific reason that they got that company i think if they got square enix they're definitely going to exclusive the hell out of almost the majority of their games unless like i said there's any kind of con uh, contracts going on that they need to fulfill and they might break that shit too we don't know exactly what playstation's gonna do but you know that's that's my opinion on the matter i do think that this does put microsoft in a weird position if it does happen because they are one of the studios that do give them japanese games and that's a huge portion that's just going to go off the market entirely sure microsoft doesn't get a lot of square enix games but because of games like octopath traveler they do get some especially going to game pass day and date they've had final fantasy and kingdom hearts run through game pass pretty successfully and a lot of people really enjoyed those games but if you take those off completely off the platform no next kingdom hearts no next dragon quest no next final fantasies at all like it's completely off the table i think we're gonna have a different conversation but definitely Put in the comment section below if you think something like this can happen. I know it's up in the air. We don't exactly know what's going on yet, but I'm very curious to hear your guys' opinion on the matter. And until next time, this is Gaming Addict. I'm out of here. Peace.